Hi everybody and welcome to another video. In this video I want to show and talk about the Plus One Guide add-on feature um, test tool. At the beginning of this video, showing the overview and main features of the test tool, it shows parts of the material which has been shown from a colleague during the Plus One developer conference in 2017. In addition, the guide manual does include a very detailed description of the test tool which should be used to train and get a better understanding of this tool. I will show all, this, all, all these steps from, from starting the tool, explain the user interface and all elements inside the test case manager, add and edit test cases, generate test code with input and output fields, up to examine test results and guide. Let's start with a test tool overview. This test tool is used to perform page level tests enabling the user to design unit and system integration tests to supplement your testing. It helps with development and understanding of how the code is executed and how it would be handled certain events, but other test methods and techniques will still need to be considered. The test tool is executed fully on the PC, so one advantage is that no external hardware is used. It fulfills partly um, ISO 61548 requirements for validation plan for software aspects of system safety, general software architecture design, software module and software integration testing. Tests are organized in test cases where each test case has signal input values, expected output values or acceptable ranges and measured output values. Send and receive CAN messages can be part of the test as well and you can set up pass or fail criteria for test cases and the test results can be reported in guide in both tabular and uh, simple graphic form and provide them in XML or CSV formats. Like it already um, says, the, the test tool is included as a feature inside um, the guide add-on and requires the guide add-on license. Remember that guide add-on license is included in the 90-day trial license, so you have ample opportunity to these out for free. After showing the benefits and use case of the guide test tool, let's take a look how it uh, looks like in guide, how to start, what elements are available and so on. The test tool interface can be found under the tools menu. Another option to start the test tool is by double clicking the test status.xml file directly under the tests folder. The test folder will be created automatically once the test tool has been started. It does include two test XML files. Test status.xml reports the result of the last execution of the test case. Double click on that file will open the test tool interface, so called test case manager as well. The test dev file.xml reports the applied inputs and expected outputs of each test case. As default, this file does not include any test case and yeah, you can rename this with a definite or unique test name inside the inspector. Inside the project manager, you have the possibility via right click on the template uh, test definition to add a test case. But um, yeah, this will be shown a bit more in detail later. So once again, start the test tool under tools menu or by double clicking the test uh, status.xml. Before the test case manager interface is started, it will be checked if the project and code status uh, has already been saved. If not, it will be started automatically. So a safe project condition is mandatory. After starting the test tool, let's take a look to the elements available inside the test case manager before we proceed. Um, on the top you find the file edit and compile menu. Here you can, you can save um, the report, add, edit and remove um, test cases and also generate test code and uh, run the tests. These elements um, can be chosen via the menu or directly via the icons. Below these elements you will find two tabs or windows called Test Manager and um, Page Manager. So let's uh, take a look to the Page Manager. This uh, window or tab mirrors the functionality of the guide windows page navigator tab, so all application pages and the subfolders as well. 
The page manager provides a way to assign test cases to pages through right click on page and select edit test definition. How to edit test definitions will be described later in the step by step example. And inside the top uh, main window, you can see the, the guide graphical code area where only uh, comments and not changing contents of this page are allowed. Below that, after a test has been started, you can see the test results in a tabulator and graphical way. Another tab or window is the test manager. <clears throat> this window or tab mirrors the structure of the test node in the plus one guide windows project manager tab. Showing the previously explained automatic implemented XML files, teststatus.xml and the template uh, testdevfile.xml. And in addition, the test manager tab does include global ranges node. Here you can uh, set the upper and lower limits for one or more outputs. A test fails when an output exceeds an upper or lower limit and how to select this global range file inside the test case uh, edit window will be shown later. In the inspector, you can find the file size and file time, and you can change the file name as well. And overall, the test case manager is used to perform the following tasks. As already mentioned in the overview slides, the test tool creates page level test cases. Each test case has a test case definition table with columns for the values that you want to input when you execute the test case and values that expect be output as a result of the test execution. How to do so will be explained in the following. After starting the test tool, we open the test manager tab or window and start with step one, create or use an existing test definition. This test definition is used as a file in the project where the test cases can be saved. You can use an already created, you can add or you can import an existing one. If you add a new test definition, it will always uh, called test-dev-file.xml. The name of this file can of course be changed according to your wishes. After we edit or choose a test definition file, we will proceed to step two, create a test case. So right click on the test definition and add test case. In the following, you will give a name and choose the test case type, so table or list, and click OK. Now a test case has been added, which is stored in the test definition file. For example, we create a file called alarm as test definition. This file does include different test cases to test alarm functions, for example. So one alarm is param alarm level, which checks the exceeding of, of a parameter threshold. To this alarm file definition, um, additional test cases could be added like temperature or pressure level alarm, for example. And these definition files, including the test cases, can be stored and used on different pages in that project. So via the possibility to add existing test definitions, you also um, can add these test cases in different projects as well. So after this uh, side trip, let's get back to the previously created test case. From beginning, it will be an empty wrapper in the test file. Inside the test definition XML file, you can see the test case entry um, immediately after the test um, case has been added. Click on the test case, will show the table window to edit the test case. So up to now, we, we have a container to store our test case or our test cases, but we have to know uh, what inputs and outputs are available and can be used. And that depends on which page we are going um, to run it on. So. The next step, number three, is to associate our test case with a code page. To do so, we will go to the page manager tab or window and select or open the page inside the application to which we would like to assign 
a test case to. Right, cl uh, right click on the, that page inside the manager and select edit test definition. In the following, uh, a window called edit test list opens where you can select one or multiple already created so available test cases. You can type the first character of the test case and it shows the available test cases with that starting character. In addition, you are able to type a new test case name and select this as a yeah, valid uh, test case. Doing so, this test case will be created automatically and listed in the test definition uh, list. I choose or select an available test case and click OK. So now the test case with an empty test case definition table has been assigned to this um, selected page. The page which um, this test case has been assigned to shows a signal or icon and indicates the status of a page. So these are available. You need to generate a test case definition table for the test case assigned to the page. All test cases assigned to the page have successfully ex um, executed. One or more of the test cases assigned to the page have failed and the test case assigned to the page does not exist. To fill in the test um, to fill in the test case uh, table and assign values to the available inputs and outputs of the selected page, we have to start a process called generate test code, which will direct us to next step number four, generate test code. So step four, generate test code process can be started via the icon in the toolbar or in menu compile and select generate test code, which opens the generate test code window. The generate test code window mirrors um, the page structure shown in the um, page manager tab. Choose the page and or pages, which needs to be considered or included and start the, the generate process. This will start the compiling process and generating test DLL. When you do the the generate test code, there are the elements that can have input and output values assigned them to them. Notice that here, as opposed to the debugger, wires and buses can have signals assigned. The following components provides inputs into a page and output values from a page. After this generate process, we are even able to start a run, um, run a test. The test result will pass with the default test case table, but it's a good um, starting point to test that test definition and test case assigned to a page and uh, yeah, has been set up correctly. The test case values of the inputs and outputs will be initialized with dashes, so no, no numbers, which will be ignored during the run test process and provides a pass result. But of course, we want to work with the input and output signals and values, create real test cases, and check the, the code logic. So after generate test code, we will edit the test case, which took us to the next step, number five, edit test case. So starting with step um, five, edit and set up test cases. The test case looks a bit different after starting uh, the generate process than before. The empty table change to a table where all input and outputs from the page are available and displayed in separated columns. In the test case editor, it is possible to include or exclude individual uh, input and output signal and you can select the inputs and outputs that are relevant for your test case. So let's have a short look what elements this table provides and how the, the user interface of test case table looks like. On the top left, you can add, insert, and delete row. Same for the columns to add and delete. Each columns or column has a check mark on the, on the top column or top row where you can hide or show an available signal. This could be helpful to minimize um, the table to the yeah, significant ones. And while the button show hide ex excluded columns, all the available signals can be managed um, yeah, very easily. Uh, inside the, the right rows, the can signals in and out are displayed as default and cannot uh, be hidden. So click on the value which opens the, the edit can messages. 
to config the input and output. It is possible to set the number of iterations on each test line in order to run the code for a number of iterations with the same input before checking the output value. One iteration corresponds to one execution loop unless the execution timeout is set in, inside the tested page. The execution timeout will be 10 milliseconds for, yeah, for this test. A dash on inputs indicates that we should use preceding uh, value. At the bottom of the test case, you have <clears throat> the possibility to, to check mark reset before run and uh, range check. Reset before run is maybe not so difficult to understand. Check mark this option to reset all inputs and internal states to zero at the start of the test. Range check, if you remember when I showed the test manager with a note, um, global ranges to set the upper and lower limits for one or more outputs. If you did not add a global range file, this check mark will be grayed out. If you have added at least one global range file and enable the, um, the check mark range check, then the test will fail when an output exceeds an upper or lower limit. Via the range selection pull-down menu, you can select one of your added uh, range check file to apply during a test. <clears throat> Once the test case table has been fully added and set up, this will put us into the, the next step, which is uh, number, number six, and called run tests. To run test, you can select compile run test via the menu or click on the run test icon inside the test case manager window. After click on, on run test, the test cases will be executed. Which test cases depends on which page in, inside the page manager ha has been selected. All test cases implemented from that page down to all sub pages will be executed. In the lower part of the page manager window, the test results window summarizes the results of all test cases. And this window does include the result, the graph and description tab. The result tab shows the result of the test case in a table. And via right click, you can export this test result tab to a CS and CSV file. The graph tab shows the result of the test case yeah, in a graph, possibility to check and uncheck selected signal in the graph. And last but not least, the description tab. Uh, here you can enter comments and details about the test case. After run the test, the status of the test case are shown with different icons. So um, inside the page manager, manager list, there are different uh, status icons like the green check mark, which shows that all test cases assigned to this page have successfully executed. And the status red X shows that one or more of the test cases assigned to the page have failed. And also a yellow exclamation mark shows that um, the generated test code needs to be executed. And the same um, status icons inside the result um, table which um, shows uh, different uh, icons as follows. There's a green bar, the test case identified in the cell passed, and the measured value equals the expected out value. Then the red bar, the um, test case identified in the cell failed, and the measured value does not equal the expected out value. And um, if a test case identified, uh, identified in the cell failed, a red bordered um, cell show where measured output values differ from expected out values. All the shown elements and figures are well described inside the guide user manual if further how-to information is needed. We hope that you found this tutorial useful. Remember that Plus One community help is available on the Plus One user forum. Check out other videos on our YouTube channel or contact the Plus One help desk. Thank you for your attention.